Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at Toxo Viper version 2. And uh, these guys came out in the 90s with the Eco Warriors. And of course they, uh, they succeeded the Toxo Viper version 1, uh, which came out in 88. And these guys were a little before their time uh, because the Eco Warriors hadn't, you know, come out yet. And, uh, um, they were just kind of testing the waters with, uh, you know, this kind of storyline and everything. Um, and they didn't really go over so well in 88. Um, they weren't that popular and, uh, I don't think a whole lot of kids collected them to tell you the truth. Um, I thought they were awesome. Um, I've army built these guys now, uh, because they're fairly cheap and they're pretty cool even with their ducky helmets um <laughs> i just like the premise of them of uh you know hazardous material kind of guys and eco terrorists and stuff um but uh the version two um they kept a lot of things kind of the same they kept the theme kind of the same uh red gloves purple outfits and whatnot um they did change up the head sculpt quite a bit um sort of uh streamlined them and made them a little more wicked looking put some kind of you know, like cat ear looking things on him there and and uh still got the breather and everything, a little more armor. And uh I think it's kind of it's an improvement. Definitely an improvement in my opinion. Um of course they had to uh they had to make them all uh you know, tough looking for the uh for cesspools uh troops, you know. Um and uh, make a good uh, adversaries for the eco warriors, and uh, I think it's a really great um, continuation of the theme. You know, um, I think it's really cool. Uh, it's got really cool armor. Um, I really like the purple. Uh, I like cobras in purple. I, I think it works out. It's a nice color for them. Um, of course, cobra blue is nice too. But uh, something about the purple, it just, it works, you know. Um, and, of course, they uh, they can be led by Cesspool um, and, of course, Dr. Mindbender, either version. Uh, it's got lots of purples in them, and they, they fit really well. They look really good side by side. And uh, these guys were, you know, the Leaky Soup Brigade running around and uh, uh, polluting the world and... <laughs> Uh, for corporate greed, of course, and yeah, all that good stuff. So yeah, um, they uh, of course they had the you know the silly water gimmick, where they put some kind of paint on here, and if you splash some cold water on it, they would kind of stain up, and uh, which was kind of unfortunate because over time, um, it basically changes permanently, and some of them can get really really ugly nowadays and there's not a whole lot you can do about it they just look like corroded and kind of messed up which isn't total drawback i suppose because they are hazardous waste workers and their suits would get deteriorated i suppose um, but it's really hard to find one in in great painted condition uh, without all this gunk on them that you know, kind of ruins the paint jobs. But uh, every now and then you'll find one that didn't get a whole lot of that color change paint on there. Or it, uh, you know, hasn't spoiled and it still kind of works. Which is nice. Um, again, you know, Hasbro tried a lot of different cool gimmicks. Color changing stuff like Zartan and Zarana. And, uh, and then these guys, the water color changing stuff, you know, with the Eco Warriors. And, uh... It's hit and miss, you know. Again, uh, back in the day, um, before, you know, age got to them, it probably worked really well and was probably really neat to do. Um, but, uh, again, uh, <laughs> time uh, time uh, erodes all things. So, you know, uh, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. But uh, it does make these guys a little more collectible. They came later in the line, 
Uh, there were smaller runs, and again, uh, even fewer of them survived without a whole lot of damage from the from that paint. So um, they can be a little pricey uh, on the market right now. Um, in the right now in 2022, with the Joe bubble going on, you're looking at at least 40 or 50 dollars a piece for these guys without accessories and up and up and up if you want them complete and of course even more if you want them on card uh, i'm not an on card collector myself but uh, uh a lot of people are and uh if you want one of these guys that you can expect to pay quite a bit for them these days um which i guess you know they're uh they're cool figures and you know i can't say they're not worth it but uh it's it's really hard to army build uh figures when they're 40 50 dollars a piece you know um, that's why i got that's why i got a bunch of these guys because you can get them for 15 or 20 dollars a piece and uh and they're still cool you know so i i kind of treat these guys as the army these guys as like the squad leaders and I just got a couple of them, and uh, you know that's about what my budget can can abide. <laughs> but uh, again, you know, um, everybody's uh, pocketbooks are different. So you know, if you can afford to army build these, then um, I think they're great for army builders. Uh, they'd be even greater if they were a little less. But uh, fortunately, they are. A bit cheaper than the Toxo Zombie, uh, which are completely outrageously priced these days and really hard to find and um, really tough to army build um, unless you got a really big wallet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, it's a great figure. Um, I would call it definitely a, you know, a. 8 to 9 out of 10 for sure um, top shelf in my opinion um, I know I top shelf a lot of figures that I review but um, of course most of the figures I review are in my collection obviously and uh, I collect the ones that I like the most so uh, definitely my opinion top shelf again your mileage may vary but um, they did a really good job with it and uh, actually, I happen to have a a uh, collector's club version of the uh, 25th style modern version of this guy too, that we can compare. And uh, they did a really good job with the modern version too. He looks really nice. Uh, they did him really good with accessories. Uh, of course, all these collector's club guys are basically Frankenstein, um, other than the original head sculpt helmet um, and this is a removable helmet which is kind of cool it's got a balaclava face underneath which is kind of neat you know an improvement over the original because these were just their standard heads uh, it's kind of nice to see at least some eyes under there and uh, they kept the color scheme pretty much the same um, they changed where the tampo was it still got the cobra biohazard logo and instead of on the arm they put it on the chest but it looks really good there I think uh, they added a cool little air tank there with also another biohazard tampo on there which I think is really cool um, give them a little pistol on a uh, on a holster it's pretty neat and of course the uh, the modern versions are stand a bit taller than the vintage versions almost a head higher um, but you know uh, scale creep is a thing uh, I don't know why they went up to four inches from three and three quarter but uh, you know it still still looks good the proportions are good on both figures in my opinion um, I have no complaints on either one uh, the uh, the collector's club versions are also a bit pricey uh, of course, they were Collector's Club. They came in a box set um, from a convention. And uh, so the the 
run was limited. Uh, the numbers are a lot less than they made of these guys. So you're looking to pay, you know, uh, in the 30 to $40 range and up uh, for one of these modern guys. Um, some guys uh, prefer the modern. I did for a while. And then I went back to the vintage nostalgia and, uh, and I'm digging on that right now. So uh, personally, my focus right now is on the vintage style. Um, so I kind of kind of lean towards the vintage being the superior one on this, even though you got a little bit better articulation and some different accessories on this guy. Um, it's just kind of a, to me, it's just a copy of the original, you know, um, and this guy was super original when it came out. Uh, the sculpt was basically all original body parts for the most part. Uh, and, uh, you know, um, mega props to the sculptor because he did a really good job with this. And also the guy that did the Toxo Zombie, which is uh, a highly modified version of this. And they did a really good job with it as well. And, uh, so yeah, that's Toxo Viper version two. Um, I really dig him. Uh, what do you guys think of him? Do you love him? Do you hate him? Uh, let us know down below. And, uh, yeah. Um, again, it was, uh, it was fun bringing you this review. Uh, it's always fun playing with my toys, but, uh, when I get to share them with other people, it's, uh, it's even better. So, uh. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you next time. All right.